Well, this is it. Let there be no doubt. The Bell from the Edmund Fitzgerald. Probably the most famous shipwreck to ever take place on the Great Lakes. The Bell can be seen at the Great Lakes Shipwreck Museum at Whitefish Point, Michigan. And yes, this is the same bell referred to in that line in Gordon Lightfoot's famous song, Wreck of the Edmund Fitzgerald, when he sings, And later that night when the ship's bell rang, could it be the north wind they were feeling? I guess I won't play Gordon's song due to copyright reasons, but I would recommend you seek it out. I can safely recommend it. It's probably worth noting that the wreck of the Edmund Fitzgerald lies approximately 530 feet underwater, about 17 miles from Whitefish Point in Lake Superior and it's actually on the Canadian side of Lake Superior. So how the bell got, went from the bottom of Lake Superior into the museum's collection is a story definitely worth telling, but first let's talk about the background of the Edmund Fitzgerald. So at the time it was built in 1958, the Edmund Fitzgerald was the longest freighter ever built for sailing on the Great Lakes. At right around 729 feet, it helped set a new class of ships sailing the Great Lakes, the 730-foot ships. They build longer ships today, upwards of 1,000 feet. It regularly shipped iron ore, just like the song says, up and down the Great Lakes. The captain at the time of the sinking was Ernest McSorley, who had taken over around 1972. The previous captain was Peter Pulser. He became known as the DJ captain for playing songs and providing commentary about the ship at different sites for spectators along the Great Lakes. The ship sank during a storm on November 10th, 1975 in Lake Superior, about 17 miles north of Whitefish Point, like I said. All 29 members of the ship's crew were lost, and none of the bodies have ever been recovered. Despite the rough weather the ship was encountering during his last radio transmission to the nearby ship Arthur M. Anderson, McSorley said, We are holding our own. We don't know what prompted that seemingly optimistic statement, but unfortunately it wasn't to be. And the ship's wreck was discovered the following year, approximately 530 feet below the surface of Lake Superior. The exact cause of the ship's sinking has never been determined. Nearly 20 years after the shipwreck in 1995, the Great Lakes Shipwreck Museum and the Canadian Navy embarked on a joint mission to recover the bell from the Edmund Fitzgerald. A diver wearing a specially designed diving suit called the Newt Suit cut the mounts that hold the bell in place so it could be lifted to the surface via a cable. The display case for the bell actually includes a photo of the bell as it was coming out of the water. And if you're wondering, did they have to clean it up? Oh yes, 
they've cleaned it up a lot actually now if you're wondering what the bell is made out of reportedly it is made of bronze and weighs 200 pounds but the story of its recovery of the dive doesn't end there in place of the original bell a new bell was lowered the new bell the replacement bell has the names of the 29 lost members of the ship's crew engraved on it and serves as a memorial at the bottom of Lake Superior where it still is today and as you might guess even though there are a lot of other things to see at the museum and at Whitefish Point the bell is definitely the most famous item in the museum's collection for me knowing the backstory of the bell and the shipwreck and how it came to be here this was very moving to see considering how it's about 1200 miles from where I live to Whitefish Point I like to tell people that's the farthest I've ever gone to see a bell I haven't ever seen the Liberty Bell in person so maybe that could change someday if I take that trip let there be no doubt though I'm glad I took the trip to go see the bell of the Edmund Fitzgerald gonna conclude this video today with a bell sound effect obviously it's not from the real bell but we're gonna play it in honor of each of the member of the ship's crew that was lost thank you for watching And one for Gordon, who helped us to remember it all with his song.